Good morning, everybody. Just beginning to throw them some cards. The first one was the tower. I don't know what the second one's going to be. Bam. Ooh, the wheel. Nice. That's a good thing, by the way. Towers happen because the foundation is shit. And everybody knows it. And so you can't build a house on a shitty foundation made of sand, for example. It'll crumble. <sighs> well, building your foundations on thin ice. <sighs> what are we going to do, right? I love throwing tarot. It's one of my favorite things. I don't do it publicly, though. This is all just for me. Part of my, part of my thing, part of my shamanistic rituals. I love burning. Burning wood is, is another interesting way of just getting in touch with the elements, like the air, water, earth, and fire. So you play with fire and you're dealing with the elements. You're controlling it. That's part of the alchemy, part of the manifestation of your reality, what you want in it. And my mind is something interesting to behold. And I'd love to, you know, catalog it and... It's interesting because I'll have moments of clarity and boom. And if I don't write that down, it'll be gone. And I'm like, oh, it's like a poem. Like it's like, it's like reading a wonderful poem, but then it just disappears in your hands. And you're like, uh, can I repeat that poem? Can I repeat that poem? And it's like, nope. I've had poems when I was, I've had downloads when I was like driving down the road. I remember one time I was going to work, and I got a download for a poem and it was amazing, it was so beautiful. I was just like, oh, this is an amazing poem, but I couldn't write it down, I was like in the middle of traffic. I was like, son of a bitch, and then it just, phew. Anyway, this video is gonna be about choosing sides and sticking to it. Cause I'm telling you, when it's like, what I always remembered in school, I was always going to new schools every year I was in a new school, like eight, eight what I said, like in the 10 years I did go to school, I was at eight different schools. So I was constantly going to new schools, right? And, and kids would always underestimate me. And I was a new kid, right? And then, But then they'd see my talent and realize I was natural, like when it came to sports. So I would, always be, I would, I would never be picked until the end because nobody knew who the hell I was. But the, and the next thing you know, it, everybody wants to be my friend, right? That was, I always had a, and the cool part was I'd always have some kids, some geeky little you know, kid that wasn't as popular, they would come up and they would just befriend me and be nice because they'd see an opportunity to make a friend, somebody who doesn't know who they are and is not going to judge them. And they were always really cool kids and they'd show me around and tell me who's what, and, you know what I mean? And I appreciated that. And then I'd get popular and the kids would be like, why are you still hanging out with that dude? And I'm like, well, because when everybody else didn't know me, that was the only person that would talk to me, right? Anyways, I, th what came into my head was a particular incident when I was coaching my son's soccer team, like well, at the beginning, I coached like eight years. And at the very beginning, they had like a, maybe the first or second year I was coaching, they had a coach's game. You know, I love soccer, right? So I show up, and there's all these guys. And for some reason, the coaches on one side of the team, the, the team I wasn't on, just had all the really good players. They're really good players, right? It's like, and all the guys I was on the team with were all just like dads and just like, you know, like actually my my assistant coach, um, Chuck Detherow, <laughs> fucking broke his leg on that game. It was funny, but it wasn't funny. But, yeah, it was just odd that that happened. But, he was you know, it was like it was a tough game. We were like it was almost like football where, you you know, you're like schoolyard football where you play you tackle. So they're getting kind of rough. Right. And here's the funny part. Right. Is we're getting our asses kicked. And I wasn't really trying that hard. I was just thought that was like a friendly kind of coach game, right? And these assholes were just, these were the coaches that ended up, would all be dumping the, the kids that didn't know how to play on me. And I'd be stuck teaching kids how to kick a ball when they had all the best players that could dribble through you, right? So we'd always get our ass kicked. They were really arrogant pricks. But here's the funny part was at the beginning of the game, we were getting like, they kept scoring. I was like, son of a bitch, right? So I was getting tired of this shit. I was like, because it's a little embarrassing. It's like, obviously, they w didn't. They could easily say, okay, obviously, we are got we got more better players or, or younger guys, so we're going to let you have, we're going to switch players. I like, kind of usually do that. and But they weren't doing that. So I was like, okay, these guys are fucking assholes. So I'm like, okay. So I said, hey, Chuck. And Chuck just happened to be on the line, right, to, to hand me the ball. I said, Chuck, just hand me. I said, you know I'm pissed. I was like, you mind if I just go down to score? And he's like, nope. I was like, okay. I was like, just hand me the ball. And he's like, okay. So he just passed me the ball from the line, and I beelined it for the goal. They weren't expecting me to go that. I'm fast, by the way. I'm, 
fast. And I beelined it for the goal. And every time the first line of guys would try to get to me in the center, i just kick the ball ahead of me and just jump over their legs because they were trying to trip me. And the second, and then like the mid, midfielders, same thing. They all were on the sides. They were all like lined up on the sidelines, and by, but they couldn't get to me quick enough. There was just one guy in the middle, and i just get by him. And I just walked up to the goalie and just kicked it to the side. Didn't even fucking, nothing dramatic. Just ran up to the goalie and just boop, kicked it in the side and scored. And then ran around. The goalie's like, is that fair? Is that legal? I mean, they were pissed. I just went down and scored on them. Made them look like assholes. It was beautiful. Next thing you know, they all wanted me to be on their side. And one of the coaches was like, oh, what's your name? Oh, well, here's the thing. You're, you're coaching for this league, so you're supposed to be on our team. <laughs> These assholes saw that I was going to kick their ass. So instead of, like, fighting me and just saying, okay, they tried to get me to be on their side. <sighs> you know what I mean? Basically, what it comes down to is a globalist, you cannot buy me. You cannot threaten me. I'm protected by God and my family is protected. So I work for the light. I work for the meek. I work for the poor on this planet. So you can go suck it. You will never own me. And you will never be able to buy me. And I will never be a part of your team. So just get that shit out of your head. And with that, the rest of you have a wonderful day. I love you. God loves you. And the universe is crazy about a winner. And somebody doesn't give up. So don't give up. Because you're awesome. And I love you. <laughs> okay. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. And I'm going to let you go that way.